Hello and welcome to 1973 GMC Motorhome episode 23. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing a new bottom in this cabinet. This was the old setup which was not working. And we've got this range hood and we're going to set it up under there. We have this space behind here and this exits through the back so this will go up you know like this somehow and we're gonna make a little s over there to get out there and that's what's gonna happen okay so i'm using some scraps of this metal that i got laying around this is gonna go up in here like this and I'll fit under there like that and then now I need to make these corner pieces so that we're gonna have our duct okay that's screwed up in there and there's your side vents and then we'll just have to put a, a bottom on it um, we get it up in there, but I'm going to go ahead and put some tape around the edges up in there where I can, well, I can still get in it. Okay, so I need to make my floor of this cabinet. And when I'm looking at this, I'm saying, hey, I got a beveled edge there and there. So what I did is I made that. And then when you sit it in there, it's perfect. And you can kind of adjust it up or down. Uh, once you get it level, then we'll put a couple screws back in here. I'll pre-drill those at an angle, and we have enough underneath to hit it. So that's what I'm going to do next, just to hold that in there. Okay, so we're all cleaned back up. Back in there, that's our, that's our box. Uh, now, let's see. Let's turn this fan on. Let's see if it actually opens the little flap on the outside. That fan doesn't seem like it's got a whole lot of ass to it, but oh, look at that. It's blowing air out and opening it up. So it is officially working. All right, so that's that project done. Okay, next project is sorting out dash wiring nest. We have removed the various switches from here. We have various wires from here. Underneath is a big mess. Um, I removed the back plate off here. That's kind of a mess in there. So we're going to take this out here, working on getting this off, but the little washer things holding on i gotta get a mini screwdriver for that so <clears throat> i'm also planning to go back to the junkyard i'm going to get a control from there that's hopefully got the writing still on it so i know what's what and these gauges they're crumbling inside uh, they were still functioning but my oil gauge is actually dripping a little bit of oil down there so we're gonna try and get this sorted i don't know if i need this lovely Thing down there so we'll see about what we can do about that maybe make something a little more attractive so anyway that's that's what's gonna happen next get this dash sorted out and I'll probably swap that radio with um, a nicer one that I have that's Bluetooth and has a backup camera so that would be nice to have all right so we're back here at the junkyard getting out these windows they are definitely a little foggy around the outside edge but anybody needs them they're going to be cheap i just didn't want to have them get crushed and ruined because if you've got a broken windshield and you don't want to pay eight hundred dollars maybe for you know a couple hundred bucks you can get one of these um plus we're gonna get the motor out of here today so i don't know what kind of access they want uh, but anyway uh this is what we're doing i'm working on getting this radiator out i need to get one of these brake lines for my coach 
Uh, hopefully it's something salvageable. I should probably just order a brand new one and make one, but I'm gonna get that and the, um, what do you call it? The uh, proportioning valve out of this because I'm still having the brake sticky issue. So, and then I got a slider on that side, other side, so that's cool. So I can, because I wanted one of those. So that's what's happening. Well, all right, so we got the side window today. We got both front windshields. I got the uh, control there for the AC because mine's missing. Um, I got a factory air cleaner, although it won't fit because of the HEI. I don't know if there's anything else in here that I can use today. Uh, I got the motor ready for extraction. Unfortunately, we will have to end up cutting up the frame. It's just, otherwise, it's just going to take days and days. The bogies are still on here. Um, so maybe we'll get that at some point, but uh, anyway, we got enough for the day. Oh, uh, here it is. I've been waiting for this. This is my uh, aluminum intake that's going to block off my exhaust passageways to keep my fuel from boiling and hopefully uh, allow me to keep the ignition timing advanced a little more. That is pretty. And then you got no exhaust going across the thing. So we're either going to go with a manual choke or maybe an electric choke. And whether I need to chamfer this or not, for the secondaries to clear, I will find out. I just, I don't know why they would do that. So I don't think that's going to be necessary, but we're going to find out. Okay, now it's intake manifold day. So we got a number of things here. We're going to have to get off. So we're just going to take our time today. We've got our surgical drop cloth on here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to drain this water down. Then I'll worry about taking off the AC bracket. I see now where this hole is drilled and tapped for AC bracket. So I want to make sure that there's one that exists which is right there. So that does not exist. Well, wait a second. All right, let's figure this out here. All right, so I'm gonna pull this distributor out and we won't have our new manifold in here, but what we can see is that basically how things are positioned where that is that's kind of going anyway we'll figure it out for making mental notes of the positioning and I'll take another picture okay so that right there right in front of that two there in between that bolt that's what the a C bracket bolts onto. You're going to see there's some oil in here, and this is this mystery oil leak that I think may be coming out of the getting sucked out of the PVC valve tube. Um, but anyway, sidetracked again. So that's what applied GMC will do to your Mondello 4300 manifold. They will grind that down and tap it. Um, it looks to me like. It's going to go right about here, but I'm going to look online and see what the picture looks like. And then I can certainly machine that as well. So that's the first thing. And the other thing is they're saying they're chamfering these ports for the secondaries. And of course, I'll find out what happens when I put the carburetor on. So now I'm going to keep digging 
away in here piece by piece. You see that is flat and it's got a hole in it. Whoops. But we can see where that has been flattened out and had a hole put in it and tapped. And then you can also see in their pictures there where the chamfering is in the back of the intake. So we'll probably do that as well before we install. Okay, now we're draining the radiator down so I can take the upper hoses off. That's what's happening next. Okay, there's intake manifold off. Looks really clean in there. So that's good. And I guess we're going to put everything, clean everything off and uh, modify that intake a little bit and then put it all back together. Okay, so we've got our edge chamfered here. It doesn't take much. It's on both sides, just a little bit. We were mounting the carburetor on there and chamfering away. So that's that takes care of that. Now I gotta go ahead and do something about this. Okay, so my guide in the picture is the inside of that. There's still gonna be a little dimple in there. Obviously, I don't wanna go down below the bottom of that hole. What we may do is start first by cutting it flush with the top of that and then we'll measure how far this is coming up on the other one. Um, we'll see, I guess we'll, we'll shoot for taking a little off the top of both of them and see what happens. If anybody's curious, by the way, what I'm doing, Using my grinder with my, I guess that's like a 16th of an inch cutoff. It's a little fatter. And what I did is I went down the depth of the blade on this piece here. So that's how I measured. I just got the, this even with the top of that, and now I'm going through this. I'm not going to do it and film it because it's got it not, don't want to mess this up. So it still looks like I can go down some. Um, but the other thing I could do is I could probably take a little bit go off the bottom of that bracket at this point, which might be better. I'm still going to have to drill my hole, figure out exactly where to position that. So here's the exploded view. Looks like I can keep going down a little bit more and just get closer to the top. The hole I'll probably tap and drill, believe it or not, when it's mounted. Because then I can be putting that bracket on there and hit the exact center. Uh, so, let's take it down a little more. Alright, so I used my DA with 320. Just to kind of polish it down. We got a couple little slightly deeper spots, but that's not going to matter because we're going to... We're going to dimple that and we drill our hole but at least you know it's smoother looking so that looks pretty good that looks just like the picture as far as I'm concerned okay so I bit the bullet I've got the AC bracket on there's a stud back behind here back in there there's a bolt up top there and it's all bolted in place and the height is pretty good I, I might have actually gone down a little bit too much so maybe I'll put a washer under that so that's the side profile I went to I mean it's not you know it's not gonna go anywhere but we're just kind of catching the inside so I'm gonna put this punch in the center and then see what it looks like and if there's not enough material out this way then I may have to just drill it and put a 5 16 in there, or even a quarter inch. I mean, something to hold this down. It's gonna have a bolt in the front and a bolt in the back, so we don't need to have a billion pounds of torque on this, but uh, we want something on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my punch and mark it.
Okay, now we're back inside. We see that it gets very close to the edge there, which is kind of what I'm getting when I look at mine too. Let's go out and look at mine outside. So that's where my punch mark is. If I center this, I'm even a little, not leaving me much. So maybe I, I can probably, I'll see how much wiggle room I got in the bracket real quick. Okay, so the bracket does give us some wiggle room. It's a tough call, but I guess for the hell of it, it'll be thin, but I'll actually move my center, uh, repunch it deeper, uh, about a half a divot over, or maybe I can move it. I mean, I got wiggle room, so maybe I'll move it forward. Anyway, I'm going to put this in there and drill a hole. Okay, there's my 5 16th hole that I'm going to tap. One of the reasons I'm doing this, or the reason I'm doing it, is to keep this fuel cool. And the air cool that's going into here. And it occurred to me as I'm doing all this, that's the air cleaner. And because of this HEI distributor, the back of that's been cut out. And what that's doing is that's sucking really hot air right into the carburetor so what needs to happen is i need to figure out some way to i'm going to block that off make that all nice in there so that that is actually sealed up because or come up with some other solution so i'm getting cold air in um, directly into the carburetor because that's that could be contributing to half the problem right there. So we're gonna address that. But meanwhile, we're gonna keep moving forward with this manifold. Okay, so that's threaded. That's tight. And uh, we got some extra threads in there. I mean, we got, you know, we can obviously tighten it. So. Now we can uh, clean everything off and put this thing on here. And that's the, you know, the threads in there. And, came out smooth so that uh, that's the machining you have to do you gotta chamfer that a little bit and grind this down drill and tap that hole okay so now our intake manifold is installed um, this is the next morning it's been sitting overnight um, I need to now begin to put all the fittings on here and I did test fit the bracket that sits here last, last night and it just was a little bit over this way. So I need to, I'm gonna take the bracket and just round that hole out a little bit, or not round it, but oblong it. Just be able to put that on there and uh, we're on our way. Okay, we're making more progress. Uh, I had to buy this one adapter here, a little brass adapter, and then that's just gonna be your quarter inch plug I don't understand why they call it a quarter inch but that's what they call it so we're putting a plug in there I've got my um, my brake booster that fits in the existing thread so this one you gotta take down let's see if I've got my little to so this it's going into this this is the farthest forward vacuum port that is for the transmission kick down vacuum or modulator or whatever it is okay so now we still have this mystery oil leak and i'm gonna imagine maybe it's coming from there i just don't know where else it could be coming from i mean so what i've done is i've gotten another electric sending unit I don't know why I have two of these. It's probably only necessary to have one, but this is going to the factory oil pressure, uh, which doesn't read low, which is, I guess, I mean, it, it tells you when it's 40 PSI, but it doesn't tell you when it gets low. So I guess I'm gonna spin this around 
and tee off into another one of these. I don't know if I could share that, but it might be different than the unit that I'm getting. Hopefully that'll still spin. And I can go back in here and run one over there. I'll have two oil pressure gauges, uh, but that's what's gonna happen with that. Okay, so I took the bucket of antifreeze, it was under, that I drained out, and I filled this, uh, filled it in through the um, thermostat housing over there um, and then I could I wanted to make sure that it wasn't dropping down and going somewhere weird where it shouldn't be going um, and it seems to be staying there I ran my camera through that port and that looked good and but you know when the gasket moves all around um, you kind of want to see what's happening there so it's been sitting a little while it hasn't dropped so that tells me at least initially I don't know what's gonna happen under pressure but initially we don't have any leaks so that's good uh, so now I'm going to put the thermostat housing back on there. Also, by the way, in doing this, it just saves a little bit of bleeding, too, because uh, at this point I'll just be filling the radiator up. Uh, with There's about a gallon left, actually, after even this point. So, And I put a 180-degree thermostat in there instead of a 195 to give me a few more degrees to get the timing advanced just as far as I can get it. Uh, without knocking. The whole point of this is to get heat off of here and so an additional 10 degrees even if I'm pushing it and you know it's going up a hill or something I mean it, if I start cooler it'll take longer to heat up so not that it again it wasn't overheating was it wasn't the problem but I think it was cooking my fuel um, so anyway we're gonna see what happens here Okay, so I got this Amazon gauge set. Right now I'm just going to use the oil pressure gauge, which is electric. Uh, because I wanted to eliminate that oil line that could have been leaking. So I've got, there's my factory gauge. And then over there, the sending unit that came with uh, the gauge kit just fits in there. It was a, definitely a tight fit, but you know what it fit. So that's on there. And we have our wire coming out here, which will go up to the gauge. So we'll replace that. Um, I can put my radiator hose back on now, and then I'll put my electric choke on my carburetor and put that on. We're taking a little break and going uh, boating in the Anirondacks today, so uh, that's what's happening. This is a 65 Penyon, is that what that is? Penyon, yeah, Captain, yes. Captain Evan. And we've got a 44 horsepower motor back there. 45-ish. We got a doggy here. 48. And a doggy, ah, 48, all right. Keys factor we, we one, Mr. Sulu. Yes, it's a 60, 16 feet. There's Blue Mountain, look at Blue Mountain. There's Blue Mountain. So that's the Adirondacks. Yes, around here it is. Oh, and that, is that the cell tower you're talking about? Can you see it? Yes, yeah. it's on it's on Blue Mountain. That's the public beach. And the cell tower that's the uh, that's the the girl that owns this is the owner of Kaplan's, which is the big building behind it. And it's actually we used to drive here. All right, well here we go.
black on the left. Okay. Some interesting buoys right here. Welcome to 1973 GMC Motorhome. Today we're spending a lovely day in the Adirondacks. We're taking our break from our intake manifold installation. We've been here a few days. This is a little boathouse down here. You can uh, rent this boat. Beautiful dock. Beautiful old canoe. There's lockers you can lock your stuff in. It's actually closed at the moment, so we should move on. But here it is. I just walked down a mile from the place we're staying on this trail. It's a really nice break. It's time to get my thoughts sorted out. Take a break from the rat race. It's really nice. You saw some shots of uh, our friend's boat we went on yesterday. Another cool old vehicle. So here we are. Here's this moss on a rock. Which people would say, it's just moss on a rock. But to me, it's just another amazing miracle of nature. I mean, it's just this soft green life. Uh, I mean, the woods are just amazing. And, you know, for people who want to believe in miracles, to me, that's all well and good, by the way. I'm not judging anybody or I'm just saying for me, every time I walk around and realize we're on this big rock floating through space, it's the exact right distance from a star and we can survive here and we've evolved here. And yet there's all these plants and this is mind boggling to think about how it is all even possible. So to me, the earth and nature, that's the miracle for me. Uh, but I do like uh, fossil fuel burning uh, vehicles as well. So it's kind of an odd contradiction there, isn't it? Evidence of man from a long time ago. There's probably some kind of stable or some kind of storage facility for something. Amazing.
So here's where we're staying. We're not staying in this little, these are a friend's house. This is one little house, it's another little house. this one which is really nice I'm gonna go get this one. here's where we're staying now camper aficionados would appreciate that toilet which is a composting toilet oh really yes after her death but she made it and Here is a unique boat that I've never seen before. It's aluminum, like a Grumman, but it's all riveted together. Here's some more old wooden boats. We've gotten sidetracked. Hi, Shelly. This is where we're playing tonight. It's the impetus for our trip up to the Adirondacks. So, so guys. The art center. in action this is <laughs> I don't know what I went to at this point of this video it's so chopped up but um, anyway let's see here I put my distributor in I put everything back together what I think I'm gonna do I've taken my gauges out here because it's a mess and I want to put new gauges in um, uh, so this wire here is my charging wire and it's hot when the engine's running. So I think if I put that on my choke, uh, my new electric choke, then uh, I've run a wire there and I've got this wire coming up here and it's a big mess. Anyway, I'm gonna stop here because uh, we got our manifold on, we got all our stuff. Uh, there's still a couple of things. I didn't clip that on there yet. But I just want to make sure it runs, so there it is. A lot of stuff has happened, but that's a good place to stop today because it's like 900 degrees outside. And uh, anyway, that's it. So next video is going to be my new gauges and tachometer. And I got some brake stuff still to mess with. Um, but hopefully uh, this manifold will take care of the boiling gas in the carburetor because there's no crossover in it. So that's the end of that. Much and see you next time.